I'm going to talk a bit about Old Jerusalem in this video. As the title would have you believe. Also, and before I get started on that, I would like to mention that Catherine and I were led to come to San Jose, California, which is where we are right now. We left Wyoming not very long ago, less than a week ago. So I'm going to put this video recorder over here so you can see some of it while I do this video. I'm going to start off in Galatians chapter 4. This is verse 19 to 31. My little children, of whom I travail in birth again until Christ be formed in you, I desire to be present with you now and to change my voice, for I stand in doubt of you. Tell me, ye that desire to be under the law, do ye not hear the law? For it is written that Abraham had two sons, the one by a bondmaid, the other by a free woman. But he who was of the bondwoman was born after the flesh. But he of the free woman was by promise, which things are an allegory. For these are the two covenants, the one from Mount Sinai, which gendereth to bondage, which is Agar. For this Agar is Mount Sinai in Arabia, and answereth to Jerusalem, which now is, and is in bondage with her children. But Jerusalem, which is above, is free, which is the mother of us all. For it is written, Rejoice, thou barren that bearest not, break forth and cry, thou that travailest not. For the desolate hath many more children than she which hath an husband. Now we, brethren, as Isaac was, are the children of promise. But as then, he that was born after the flesh persecuted him that was born after the spirit. Even so, it is now. Nevertheless, what saith the scripture? Cast out the bondwoman and her son. For the son of the bondwoman shall not be heir with the son of the free woman. So then, brethren, we are not children of the bondwoman, but of the free. So, I say, who does Kufi work for if old Jerusalem is in bondage, whose house is left unto her desolate? Matthew 23, verses 37 and 38. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets, and stonest them which are sent unto thee, how often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings, and ye would not. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. About 3,000 years ago, all Israel obeyed a certain king which brought about the spiritual desolation of old Jerusalem, which remains spiritually desolate to this very day. I'm going to read three sections, uh, some from, two from the Old Testament and one from the New Testament, to show how this was brought about. Leviticus 20, verses 1 to 5. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Again thou shalt say to the children of Israel, Whosoever he be of the children of Israel, or of the strangers that sojourn in Israel, that giveth any of his seed unto Molech, he shall surely be put to death. The people of the land shall stone him with stones. And I will set my face against that man, and will cut him off from among his people because he hath given of his seed unto Molech, to defile my sanctuary, and to profane my holy name. And if the people of the land do any ways hide their eyes from the man, when he giveth of his seed unto Molech, and kill him not, then I will set my face against that man, and against his family, and will cut him off, and all that go a-whoring after him, to commit whoredom with Molech from among their people. 1 Kings 11.7 7. 
Then did Solomon build an high place for Chamosh, the abomination of Moab, in the hill that is before Jerusalem, and for Molech, the abomination of the children of Ammon. Acts 7, 42 and 43. Then God turned and gave them up to worship the host of heaven, as it is written in the book of the prophets. O ye house of Israel, have ye offered to me slain beasts and sacrifices by the space of forty years in the wilderness? Yea, ye took up the tabernacle of Moloch and the star of your god Remphan, figures which ye made to worship them, and I will carry you away beyond Babylon. Now, I've talked about this before, and I'd like to mention it again, that Remphan means Saturn. And Saturday was named after the planet Saturn. And that's the day that the false Jews that are mentioned in Revelation chapter 2 and chapter 3 have their once a week Sabbath thing that they do as many of you already are aware of old Jerusalem the desolate whore will never be new Jerusalem no matter how much tax support Obama sent her or what anybody else tries to do for her. Her house is left to her desolate, just like Christ said. Luke 21, verses 20 to 22. And when ye shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains, and let them which are in the midst of it depart out. And let not them that are in the countries enter therein too. For these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. Where is the beast of Judah's Judea, people? Because Solomon was of the tribe of Judah. 1 Kings 10.14 now the weight of gold that came to Solomon in one year was six hundred three score and six talents of gold. Revelation 13, 18. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast. For it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred three score and six. Revelation 17, verses 7 and 8. And the angel said unto me, Wherefore didst thou marvel? I will tell thee the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carrieth her, which hath the seven heads and ten horns. The beast that thou sawest was and is not. Just like dead Solomon. I just fit that in there. And shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder, whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world, when they behold the beast that was, and is not, and yet is. Tax support to Benjamin Netanyahu's desolate whore helps her rape and kill children for Molech's sake. Period. And the powers that be are ordained of God and not elected by conformist voters by the way. Romans 13 verses 1 to 8. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power resisteth the ordinance of God, and they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. For he is the minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid, for he beareth not the sword in vain. For he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. Wherefore ye must needs be subject, not only for wrath, but also for conscience sake. 
For for this cause pay ye tribute also, for they are God's ministers, attending continually upon this very thing. Render therefore to all their dues, tribute to whom tribute is due, custom to whom custom, fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor. Owe no man anything but to love one another, for he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. So where is a separation of church and state needed if the real powers that be are ministers of God? God's elect are here, casting down thrones. Daniel 7, verses 9 and 10. I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit, whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head like the pure wool. His throne was like the fiery flame, and his wheels as burning fire. A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. Thousands, thousands ministered unto him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The judgment was set, and the books were opened. Take a look at Revelation 20:12, people, because this is a happening thing. It just happens to be that year also. This is what I see coming, that the, estab the established church suck up to the false powers and conform to that for personal gain, but they're all coming down. Revelation 6, verses 15 to 17. And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, and every free man hid themselves in the dens, and in the rocks of the mountains, and said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us, and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? None of the false powers will be able to stand. That's a sure thing. Thank you.